Hello, praise God. Hope you are well and of good health and strength from wherever you're watching us from, whether here in person with us at church or at the comfort of your home or office. Well, I'd like to take this chance to welcome you to our today's service here at New Hope Church under the leadership of Apostle Geoffrey Mshindi and Reverend Margaret Mshindi. We are located off Manyanja Road next to Rockfield Junior School and to our services. Well, we have morning devotions from Monday to Friday from 6 to 7 a.m. in the morning. We have a midweek Wednesday service that runs from 5.30 to 7 p.m. in the evening. And lastly, our Sunday services that start as early as 6.30 to 8.30. That's the intercessory service, followed up by the mentors class from 8.30 to 9.45. Then we have the Bible study from 9.45 to 10.45. This is where our members get to study the word in depth and learn from each other. Then lastly, we finish off with the main service that runs from 10.45 to 1 p.m. And on that note, today, however, is a special Sunday. Today is our Thanksgiving Sunday. And we want to thank the Lord as a church for the far we have come as we acknowledge dominion that has, which is evident in the lives of so many in a different way and special way. And on that note, I'd like to welcome our visitors. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us. And for those at home, don't be a stranger. Come, we welcome you as well to come and fellowship and praise with us and feel at the feet of Jesus. You can give through our pay bill number 639-638. I repeat, 639-638. Your account name will be your type of giving, be it love offering, tithe, sacrifice, thanksgiving. Well, I now welcome you to join in on the service. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. So, it's a secret in life that continues people's advancement and progress. People who want to continue will draw that weapon of thank you too close to them. Why? Anytime a man says thank you, God comes down. And when God comes time, he progresses them and continues them forward. So you can see a person advancing time and again. And you wonder, where is the energy of this movement? He doesn't pray as much as they do. He doesn't fast as much as I do. But he has known the secret in saying thank you. Acknowledging God for what God has done. Hallelujah. So thanksgiving is recognizing that someone beyond you has helped you. Someone above you has come to your aid. What you could not have been able to do, someone else has come in to do it for you. And therefore you are saying thank you. Hallelujah. It is recognizing that you received help from another place. When you don't say thank you, you are saying, I have done it by my own power. You are saying, if it were, it were not for me being there, it will not have been done. As soon as I arrived there, it was done already. Hallelujah. But when you recognize that it is not you, then you have to return credit to who has done it. You are saying, God has done it. Thanksgiving is also built on the understanding that it is for privilege. It is not a right that he did it to me. Hallelujah. In today's generation, when you take a child to school, they have been made to understand it is their right for you, a parent, to take them to school. So, I don't have to tell you thank you because that is your responsibility. And many people have that same attitude towards God. You created me, you need to take care of me. When God causes us to escape certain things, we take them for granted because we feel it is our right. But when you acknowledge that this that has been done is a privilege. It is not too difficult for you to come and say thank you. And sometimes even bow down. Hallelujah. 
You can choose to go too low. Because what has been done to you is amazing even to yourself. Hallelujah. Is it a right for you to live? No. You live today, but you must consider that it's a privilege for God to have given me this opportunity to enjoy. Hallelujah. Are we together, brethren? It's a privilege to be alive. It's a privilege to be healthy. It's a privilege to, be, to have achievement. It's a privilege to have a family if you have any. It's a privilege to do that job that you are doing. Atakama haileti pesa ya kutosha. You can't take it for granted. How many more people are more learned than you are? And are looking for that same opportunity. But they cannot get it. How many more people are even trusting God to have an earning of 10,000 only in a month? It's not there. Is it that you are better than those people? God has given you a privilege for his own reason. When their time comes, they also have a privilege. And many of us, we lose opportunities that come to us because we don't know how to say thank you, God. Some of our murmuring is not even through the mouth. It's through our behaviors. The way we approach God, the way we attend to his duties, it all shows that we are not appreciating at all. Praise the Lord. Can somebody help me read this scripture that we shall read several times in Psalm chapter 92 and verse number 1 to 3. It says, it's a good thing to praise God. And I want us to see some of the reasons why we need to thank God. Because if you don't know why you, are, you, are, you need to thank him, you think you are being pushed too much. Why am I being pushed too much? Thanksgiving, are you there already? Please read for us. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Hallelujah. Do you want to do a good thing? One of the good things to do is to give thanks to God. So why do we thank God? Number one, because it's a good thing. When we come before him, thank you Jesus. You wake up, lift up your head. Thank you, Jesus. You turn the other side of your bed. Thank you, Jesus. You are able to swallow food. Thank you, Jesus. Because many people are not able to swallow food even though it is there. Some are feeding through pipes. You are able to feed yourself. Some have food, but they don't have appetite. Thank God you have appetite. If you got food, you will eat it. Is a good thing to thank God. Can you say again, thank you, Jesus? So it should not escape us that God has given us an opportunity to thank Him every time. Other version says a good and perfect gift to thank God. So if it's a good thing to thank God, then it is godly and it's also spiritual. If you are a spiritual person, therefore. It should not take you too much to tell him thank you. It should be too automatic and not only coming from your lips but from your hearts. It's flowing out. Hallelujah. The joy that people see in your face as you say thank you Lord is just coming from your heart that I'm able to breathe in. I'm able to breathe out. Oh God thank you. That God you have given me a cloth to put on when other people are naked. Oh God thank you. It's a good thing to thank God. Number two, why do we thank God? It is the will of God to thank him. Thessalonians, this is Thessalonians second, second of us, chapter five, chapter five and verse number 18. Chapter five and verse number 18. Let's read that one quickly, please. Hallelujah. It is the will of God for us to thank God. So thanksgiving is a mystery that is hidden to so many people. Many people don't understand the secret of thanksgiving. And yet thanksgiving 
has given people opportunities and mileage too far. It has increased other people's speed. Just thank you, God. When many people spend too much time doing so many other things that are called religious, some people have mastered the art of saying, thank you, Lord. And that alone has brought God too close to them and made them to achieve and overcome so many obstacles and battles that were set ahead of them. In everything, how many things? Please say, how many things? It says, give thanks. In everything, give what? Thanks. So, some of the things that you don't even consider so important to you, you should learn to say thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can you stand up, everybody? Even standing up like that is one of the everything. Hallelujah. Okay, sit down. Stand up. Hallelujah. It says what? In everything. Standing up is one of the very everything. Hallelujah. Okay, sit down. Mm -hmm. Until you get it. Stand up. Yes. Pastor Teresa now got it. Hallelujah. It says in everything. But because you took it normal to stand up, sit down. Stand up, sit down. You don't see the reason of saying, why should I say thank you? And yet, everybody else is standing up. It looks common, but yes, it's true. Sometimes you don't need to shout, thank you, Jesus. But you can say it in your heart. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God, I rose up. Thank you, God, you afforded me to sit down. Some people sit down with difficulties. They have to hold things and go down slowly until they have sat. And standing up is another trouble. You, you are standing, sitting, standing, sitting. It says, in everything, give what? Thanks. Please sit down. Oh my God. This is a very good class. <laughs> Why? For this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Now, it means that if you are living in Mandera, where there is hunger, is that part of everything? Yes. So why do you thank God? You don't thank him because of what he has just done, but it's the attitude of your mind, your response. Hallelujah. It says, in everything, thank God. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Some of the will of God will not be pleasing to you. But if it's the will of God, thank God for it. It may not be so sweet in your mouth. If you are sick and you are given some medication, they are very bitter. But you just take them. Some of the will of God, I say again, will not be so sweet to you. But if it's the will of God, you have to learn to say, thank you God. Hallelujah. If it is the will of God, then he has a better reason as to why it needs to come to you at that time. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. Don't let this escape you. Can you go ahead a little? Okay. Quench not the spirit. Okay, fine. So, Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 10. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 10. So, why do we thank God? Number one, it is because it's a good thing. Number two, it's because it's what? The will of, is what? The will of God. It is the will of God for men to give thanks to God. So all men who are of God, they should not get it difficult to say thank you God. And you must say it so much from your heart that everybody will know. Sometimes you can thank God because 
you have told me to thank him. But I want it to spring from your heart. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Continue. But he says, thy kingdom come. His kingdom comes only when men learn to say thank you. So sometimes, even before you can pray, thy kingdom come. When you say, thank you God, that kingdom already comes. When men know how to give thanks to God, they invite the kingdom of God to come. Those who know the secret, then will say thank you so many times. Because every time you say his kingdom comes, and you want to stay in his kingdom, then that should be your habit. It should be just in you. Number three, thanksgiving is the secret to multiplication. We have read a scripture there in Jeremiah. Multiplication. People want to be multiplied. People cry for, multiply me, go. Multiply me, go. Sometimes you can stand before a door and you shout, that door does not open until you get a small key. That key can command the opening of that door. Even if it's a great door, you just need to insert a small key and that door opens. Most of the doors in the kingdom of God are opened by thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Most of the doors, stubborn ones, that have refused to open completely, when men learn the art of thank you God, those doors fly open. When we will know that there is a secret in this thanksgiving, a key that is able to open stubborn doors, brother, it will flow. Which I shall be saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Anyhow, thank you, God. Even your husband buys you a sweet, you say, thank you, God. He says, is it God or me? Oh, yeah, it's you and God. Hallelujah. If God doesn't command men to come on your way, they will not come. If more men are forced to come on your way, my brothers and sisters, they will come but naggingly and they may not be a blessing to you. But when God commands them to come, when a man is commanded from whatever place to come and bless you, that man can spend too much just because of you. If thank you is that key which will draw men to come, then why don't we give God thanks? Can you say thank you, Jesus? In John, please read for me this one. John chapter 6 and verse number 6 to 13. Read for me this one. A secret to multiplication. Jesus has gone to preach and they've gone too far on the mountain. And then people have followed him in multitude. Jesus has preached until it is now evening. People are supposed to be going to their homes, but people are hungry. A hungry person is an angry person. So people are hungry and they are too far withdrawn from the city. They are on the mountain. But there is a woman who was wise who understood that Jesus' meetings sometimes can take too long. So she packed for her child fish and bread. Said, my son, I know Jesus' meetings Sometimes they don't have schedule. Can you go with this? Hallelujah. So did I say that preachers are not supposed to have a schedule? No, that's not what I said. But she prepared her son. And the scripture says, a time has come and it is now evening. People are not only tired, but they are also hungry. If you are there, I'm waiting for you to stand up. Wait. He is said to prove him. Can you read verse 5? Uh -huh. Philip. 
Where do we get bread? That they may eat. He said to prove him. Why? For he, him himself knew what to do. Hallelujah. Can you tell me? Say Jesus. Help me to know what I need to do. Every situation invites a level of knowledge. When you know what to do, every situation will submit to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Wisdom of knowing what am I supposed to do in this situation is very important. Why are people hired consultants and doctors? Because they know what to do. If your car stalls and you call a mechanic and he comes, you sit back. When he was not there, you are trying to touch everything and anything. When the mechanic comes, you sit back and allow him to do what he knows to do. Jesus knew what to do. Can you say in the name of Jesus? I receive the gift of knowledge that I will know what to do. When situations come, he knew what to do. He himself knew what to do. Read. Philip answered him, uh -huh. 200 pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them. It's not enough for them. That every one of them may take a little. Uh -huh. One of his disciples, Andrew, uh, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, uh -huh. There's a lad here, a which, child here. which had five bare loaves mm -hmm. and two small fishes. Mm. But what are they? Um, but what are they? Um, what? They among so many. Among so many. And this is the attitude of many people in the church and outside church. What you have, you think it is too little. And anytime you come before God, instead of thanking God for what he has given you, you are full of complaints. Is there anybody who has anything here? Uh, is there anybody who has anything here? Yes. Can you tell God thank you? Yes. What you have, you must learn to tell God thank you for it. Amen. When we miss to tell God thank you, it only remains what it is. You have a hundred shillings? Don't begin to say, I know that your expenses could be more than what you have. But please, remember to thank God for what you have first. Because even what you have, someone else is seeking for that, but they don't have it. He says, what is this? What is this? God takes you places, you ask, what is this? God gives you a cloth, a, a garment. Someone blesses you, you ask, what is this? God gives you food. You ask, what is this? God will give you some friends. You ask, what is this? God will give you a plot. Maybe closer to the river. And you, your friends are staying far. In better places. You ask, what is this? Can we say, thank you God. For what you have given me. May your attitude and my attitude be right. Before God. So that we shall thank him. Even for that which seems too small to us, we will always remember to tell him, thank you God. Can you read more? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Jesus told them to tell the men to sit where? Down. When they are asking what is this, Jesus is saying, let them sit down because I know the key. I know the key to multiplication. The key to multiplication is not complaining and asking. This is too little. And let me tell you, and I'll repeat this several times. One of the reasons that people don't thank God is because we have so many people that are immature. Because Unless you mature, you can never thank God. Check it with your child. 
you will give him something or give her something. When you ask that, that same thing from him or her, they will not give it back to you. But you are the one who gave them. Gratitude can only come to a person whose heart or maturity, spiritual maturity has been gauged, has been rated and can satisfy. Jesus tells them to sit down. And when they had already sat down, maybe by complaining and asking, you are telling us to sit down, yet there is no food here. Why are you telling us to sit down? But they still sit sat down. The Bible says then Jesus did what? Now there was much grass in the uh, place. Uh, 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 uh. Jesus did what? Took the loaves. Yes, he took the loaves. And when he had given thanks. And when he had given thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. When he had done what? Given thanks. He gave thanks for what he had already. Do you have something? Give thanks for it. Hallelujah. Don't ask questions. For a child who is a child of God, they have always to say, Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. When God tells you anything, Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. He took it. When he was holding in the hands, he did not ask, but this is too little. What will we do it? Can we subdivide it to this whole people? He lifted it up. Hallelujah. And did what? And he gave thanks. He gave thanks. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. When he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were sat down and likewise the fishes as much as they would. What happened? There was multiplication. Praise the Lord. Two fish and five loaves. How can it feed 5,000 men? The secret to opening that door was in giving thanks. Brothers and sisters, there has been a secret which we have ignored. I know we have prayed a lot. We have declared a lot. We have done too much that is needed. But there is one thing that we have neglected. We have forgotten to say thank you, God. Praise God. There was enough. It says what? When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. This is also an attitude of thanksgiving. Because this thing has come by a miracle, I cannot let it go to waste. On many occasions, when there is abundance, people don't remember. Because even how it came, they did not know. When you give people things that have not costed them, they don't take them so seriously. Thanksgiving is a price. It is a means of exchange that is too important to the heavenly, to the heavenlies. Children of God who understand that secret will use this currency so many times. It's a currency. A means of exchange. Thank you, God, for this that you have given me. Not, now what do I do with this? Praise the Lord. Is a means of multiplication. Now, if you go back to the scripture that we read, the Bible says what? In the book of Jeremiah, verse number 19, then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry and I will multiply them. God says, when they give thanks, I will come back. When I come back, that which they have and they gave me thanks for, I will multiply it. Praise the Lord. I gave them one shop and they gave me thanks for that one shop. They said, oh God, see how marvelous you have done to us. You have given us this shop. 
Even though it's a small shop, oh God, we thank you so much. And God came back. Hallelujah. And he multiplied shops in different locations. Now you see why you have not increased? It's because you never gave thanks for that which God gave you. Maybe you saw it as small. Maybe you say it, now this one, how can I stand before people and begin telling them that God has given me a new shoe? <laughs> Have you ever given thanks for the shoe that God gave you? Or even for the shirt that God gave you? That praise God, brethren, I thank God so much. He's blessed me the new shirt. Even you who is hearing, it looks like relevant. Why should you tell us about a shirt you have bought? Praise the Lord. If you cannot give thanks to God in the church, then use the platform of your house of a friend or a friend or a company of people whom you trust. But learn to say thank you God through many ways. Hallelujah. Small things that you consider small that God has done for you. Go ahead and tell him thank you God. Because you don't know how much it's going to happen to you after that. Let's learn to give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving also, Thanksgiving also, is a secret to wholeness and perfection. It's a secret to wholeness and perfection. So, there is a distance God has taken you, but there is another distance God needs to take you. Thank him for the distance he has taken you. If you really want to go the rest of the distance that is ahead, please remember to tell him, thank you for where you have brought me. Hallelujah. We have a very nice story of thanksgiving in the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, chapter number 17, and verse number 13. The Bible talks about these men that are lepers. And there are ten of them. Leprosy in that time was a bad disease. Just like there are bad diseases in our time. But this was too bad because if you had it, then even your very own people will separate you. You are supposed to stay at the gate. And you must continue to shout when a man is coming or a woman is coming. You shout and say, I'm leprous, I'm leprous. So they don't come close to you. Praise the Lord. It was a very bad disease. But, what does it say? Read. And they lifted up their voices. Uh -huh. And said, Master, have mercy on us. They did what? They lifted up their... Praise the Lord. Can you lift up your voice and say, Master, have mercy on me. That is the, the highest you can go. Can you try again? Master, Master. have mercy on me. Bible says they lifted up their voices. Okay, let's just go as you have gone. And when he saw them, he saw them. Why? Because he was attracted by the lifted voices. He said unto them, go and show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were what? So they were told to go to the priests. Why? Because the only person who will satisfy you being perfect and fully healed from this disease was a priest. When Jesus told them to go to the priest, they will have stood there and said, Master, it's not that which we need from you. We want you to lay hands on us and pray for us. Because religion has a way that it operates. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many people miss out on God because they were taught that things are supposed to be done in a particular way. And sometimes God will use another route. He will not always come to us in one route. He may want to use another route. But because you are used to one route, he may tell you, go and show yourself to the priest. But you stay there and say, oh master, please don't let me go. Lay your hands on me. But the Bible says they did what? They went. What is that? They obeyed. The scripture records. This is where we are. 
Okay. Go on. Let's go. And one of them, when he saw that what? He was healed. Turned back. And what? With what? Please say loud like he said. With what? Say it louder than that. With what? So a thanksgiving heart has to voice out. Hallelujah. A person with a thanksgiving heart will not just be silent. Silent. They must know how to voice out their gratitude. It says with a loud voice. Meaning they refuse to be gentlemen. He refused to be a gentleman. He must have found Jesus with many other people. But he didn't want to know who other, other person is doing what with Jesus. When he reached him, the Bible says he shouted. Huh? With a loud voice, he did what? He glorified God. Hallelujah. He glorified God with a loud voice because God has done to me what no man could have done to me. Hallelujah. God has come to my aid when I tried to seek for the help of men. I could not get it. I'm not going to be fearful of this man. I will announce what God has done for me. Hallelujah. Why do we fear to say what God has done to us? And when we say it sometimes, we want to say it as gentlemen in a particular way. I wish you could get men like these ones. The first thing he did is he turned from his friends. Maybe he told his friends, brethren, this that has happened to us, hata tusifikie makuani kwanza. Before we can get to the priests, let's go back to Jesus. Hallelujah. He tried to convince them, we need to go back to the man who has made us all. Let's go back and tell him that we have experienced something great in our lives. But they said, no, we'll go back to the priests. We'll go unto the priests. So the man decided, I will go back myself alone. Hallelujah. Can you see the ratio? They were ten. Only one returned. Only one returned. So in a church, there can be so many people who have been done so many things. But how many come back to say, the Lord has done it to me? He did not say it in the secret. He shouted. Even though men were around Jesus, he could have just gone to Jesus' ear and say, Jesus, it has happened. But he shouted and glorified God. Hallelujah. We are going to shout and glorify our God for the things that he has done to us. Hallelujah. Some of us were supposed to have done died through that time of COVID-19. Were you so keen that you washed your hands and you did all that was necessary? That's why you are protected? No. There are many people who are very careful with every step they made, but they still died. You, God, preserved you. Did you remember to come back and tell God, thank you, that you protected me and you built a hedge of fire around me that even though this disease came, it passed me and went to my neighbor. How many of you are here and you know of a person who died of COVID-19? You know of a person. You know of a person who died. Najua huyu alikufa. Hallelujah. Ah, so many of you. Praise the Lord. God has done marvelous things for us. We have all reason to tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Only one came back to say thank you. Now see, the scripture will say, glorify God. Let's go. And fell down on his face at his feet. He shouted, that was not enough. He fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus. Giving him what? Thanks. And he was who? A Samaritan. Not even of that family of Jesus. But he understood what needs to be done more than the children of God. He said in his heart, uh -uh, I cannot continue as if life is as usual. I will go back. And when he came back, he shouted one, he fell on his feet too, and he gave thanks. 
and he was a Samaritan. Let's go on. And Jesus answering him, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Please ask for me your neighbor. Where are the nine? Now tell him, I hope you are not among the nine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is also concerned. This number was bigger than this. How comes only one has come back and even the one who has come back is not of my family? When we become so familiar with God's things, then it is automatic. Waking up is automatic. Getting that skuma you are complaining. And now it's a whole month. I've not yet eaten, taken meat. Hmm? It's automatic for you to take what you are taking. But for a Samaritan who understands more of your doctrine than you do, they will come back to thank God, even for that Sukuma week. Brethren, let us learn to thank God. There is a secret in thanking God. Let's go on. And the Bible records that, and as he entered into a... And... Okay, can you read? There were no found... They are not, not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger, Jesus, Jesus is saying. Hakuk patikana yeyote mwingine. Wakuja kushukuru. Bali huyu mgeni. is a stranger who is coming to do the right thing. But the children who have been here with me do not know how to do the right thing. How comes it's only a stranger? And he said unto him, What? What? Can you say in the name of Jesus? Is my time to arise. So whenever people give thanks, there is a tendency of people arising. From where they were, the level they were. Remember, the man is down on his face. Jesus is telling him, arise. Now you need to be in a new level. The way up is the way down. So now that you have gone down, humbled yourself, given thanks, arise. Arise. Go where? Thy way. Go where? See, there is a way you are supposed to go, but you have been hindered for a long time. Maybe you needed to give thanks. There is a way you have desired to go, and we call it thy way. There is a life you have desired to live. There are friends you have desired to have. There are estates you have desired to live in. There is a certain lifestyle you have desired. Jesus tells him, arise, go thy way. When such a word comes from a commander like Jesus, nothing else will hinder you. Whatever hindered you as you give thanks, you will go thy way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He says, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made you what? Has made you what? So, thanksgiving is the secret to perfection and wholeness. Your faith has made you whole. And I told you wholeness there means your life has now become the original it was. Leprosy takes away certain parts of your life. Certain parts of your organs. Your fingers are cut. Your toes are cut. So, leprosy has a way of separating from you. When you know the secret of thanksgiving, it has a way of returning back what was taken away from you. Hallelujah. Whatever was taken away, you will not only be healed, but it will also be commanded to return. Oh my God. I say to be commanded to return. If you lost anything, there is a secret in you coming before God and telling him, thank you God. So dear brothers and sisters, with this teaching, I want us to rise up. So already our time is passed by 10 minutes. Let's rise up.